going some more in this oven, baby. We're going to start cooking some more stuff up. Next person will be coming up is the Republican gov uh, nominee governor for the state of Oregon. His name is Bruce Cuff from Marion County area. God bless y'all. Sam, 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 Sam. Oh, okay. She needs to go home. You know, she's done, more, she's done more damage in 15 months not being elected than I can imagine. She's acting like she's got a mandate. But don't get me off track. i got to stay on my notes here. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm Bruce Cuff, and the best way that I explain myself is I'm a Christian, constitutional, conservative Republican. And if you back me... The, the things that we need to do are we need to get local control back into our communities. Number one, that means that, this, and, I, and I stopped calling them public lands after I watched a, a video the other day. They're not public lands. They're state lands. They belong to the state of Oregon. Public lands are, are lands that do not, that are free of encroachments that you can go set up your 160 acres on and homestead. That's not what we have. All these lands, are, are they, they belong to the state of Oregon, and they're state lands. So what we need the feds to do is recognize those as state lands, and we start, we start um, managing them that way. And the counties are dying in this state. The rural counties are dying because they don't have enough revenue. So those lands need to stay state lands, and they need to be managed and run by the counties so they can get the revenue off them to, to do what they need to do. So... Um, We're here for Lavoie today. You know, we, we, uh, we unless, unless Eamon and uh, Lavoie showed up, the, the issues that's going on right now with the BLM abuse of these folks wouldn't necessarily come to light. And, of course, the reason Lavoie and Eamon came was because of the Hammonds and, and the fact that, you know, the federal judge, I talked about this up in Portland, the federal judge, or the judge that made a ruling in this case the U.S. District Attorney, they wanted to they wanted to sentence these guys based on the terrorism statute, so there was a minimum five-year sentence for burning 139 acres, charging them with arson. Okay, how many arsonists do you know that actually put out the fires they set? None. Okay, these guys, they, the fires that they started that burned onto the BLM land, they put them out. Okay, so so when when the judge. The jury found the only two fires, they, the only 18 counts they charged with, the only two that they could actually charge them with were two fires that they actually admitted to setting. So once the jury found them guilty, the judge in that case, he used two legal terms. One is, to sentence these folks to prison for five years shocks the conscience. Okay, And then he said, to sentence them for five years would be cruel and unusual punishment. So what he did is he sentenced them based on the BLM statute. The BLM statute says the maximum sentence in that case is a year. So Steve was complicit in both cases. Steve went to jail for a year. Dwight got sentenced for three months. They've already served their time. Part of their settlement was they could not appeal. They had to pay $400,000 in fines to the, to, to the feds. And the feds got the first right of refusal on their ranch if they ever sold it. So what does that tell you, right? They were after their ranch. You know, they, but, but uh, Eamon, you know, they, they put about 50 ranchers out of business already, and, and the, the Hammonds were one of the last ones in this Malheur uh, National Refuge that they actually wanted. So, so here we are. So they sent them, so the federal judge, even though they couldn't appeal, he appealed. And that's why they got sent back to jail. <laughs> to me, that's double jeopardy. That should not have happened. That's why these came out here to help us. They drew attention to that. And for that, I appreciate it. For that, Lavoy gave his life. Okay? And we can't, and, and those guys, they're not, they're political prisoners. You know, the, when you look at the statement uh, that, that you pull out the Constitution and aim it would turn open to Section 1. Uh, paragraph, um, I'm sorry, section one, or I mean, article one, section eight, paragraph 17, and we start talking about, uh, you know, ports, ports, forts, and the 10 square miles, it doesn't give the federal government, that's all the right that they have. When you, when, when you pull that out and you start talking about it to people, um, if, if, if they, they look at you like you're a fanatic, but the fact of the matter is, that statement is in the Republican Party platform. 
It's in the Oregon Republican Party platform that we expect the federal government to do just that. And we need to join the western states and get our lands back so that the counties can actually manage them. So we got to get local control back. The other thing that we need to do is our school system. It's increasingly anti-Christian, and the only way it stays together is because we send our kids there. We need to have... We need to have a, some kind of voucher system where we have maybe 70% of the money that, that we're currently, to give, give, it to, give it to the parent in the form of a voucher. Let them vote by pit, putting their kids in private schools. There's teachers out there right now that are in this system that want out. They've had it, and we're losing them, okay? So we need to have a separate system where the, where the teachers that are there, if I had nine teachers that could teach K through 8, and they pulled out of the system, and they started a private co-op, and I asked one of them, I said, hey, if I gave you $7,000 per child, could you make that work? He said, absolutely. That's what we got to do. We got to get our schools to where they can start disciplining the kids. If they want to teach the Bible, or they want to teach morality, that's, that's, you know, right now they can't. I mean, it's anti-Christian in the school right now, you know, so that, that's what they're teaching. So we're stuck. We're stuck in that system, so we got to fix that. The other thing, is we need 36 constitutional sheriffs in the state of Oregon. Every, every single county needs to be able to count on that elected official. They are the chief law enforcement officer elected in that county. They should be able to count on them to protect their citizens. If the federal government, the FBI shows up, the BLM, they've got their own police force, the U.S. Forest Service has their own police force, uh, you know, the state of Oregon, we have a police force. If you're going to go mess with somebody in the county, right, these these guys better be talking to the sheriff before they mess with anybody in their county. We need, we need to have, that's our protection. And if they're not willing to do that, we just saw what happened in Harney County. That's what happens. You know, that didn't have to happen, you know. Um, so 53%, currently 53% of Oregon is is uh, what they consider federal lands, which I'm just saying is state lands. I saw a little deal on, the, on Facebook the other day that said Alaska is working on to where they can actually buy lands from the federal government back up to the tune of like 2 million acres. And, and my post was, why would we want to buy our own lands back from the federal government? Right? You show up at the forest, you take the national sign down, you put state sign up there, and you're done. That's what we need to do. Let's just do it. Well, he's going to be on a list, too. Some of those lists I'm on. He'll be audited very shortly here. Let's see. So we, uh, in Oregon... There's a lot of things that we need to do. Kate Brown, like I said, uh, this they, they have broken faith with the, with, the, with the people of Oregon this year. They, they had a 35-day session, which the Democrats, when they passed this annual session deal, they basically said, hey, look, we're just going to tweak the budget 35 days and then get out of town. Well, you know what they did this year. Substantive legislation. The, the minimum wage, yeah, minimum wage stuff. You know, they did. They basically did everything they could do so to set themselves up politically for the election coming for their own folks to, to, to get money out of them. You know, and so they get their support. Well, you know what? That they, they have broken faith with the people of Oregon. And and when when our Republican representatives and senators called them on it and said, Hey, look, this isn't what the session was for. We're going to fight you tooth and nail. They just said, Hey, that's not in statute. Well, hey, you know, when you when you reach out and shake somebody's hand and you say, "Hey, I'm going to do this," if you don't have it in if you don't have it in pen and ink, you know, it's still a, it's still a contract. I mean, is your word any good? They've just proven to us their word is no good, no good. Liars. Amen. So the last thing, I'm a, I'm a real estate agent. I've taken an oath to. Uh, support private property rights. And part of these private property rights, this is a perfect case, we have grazing, the ranchers have grazing rights that are being infringed upon. They have water rights that they've been trying to infringe upon them. As a real estate agent, every real estate agent in, a, in this state has raised their hand and said, we will protect private property rights. Every real estate agent should be involved in this fight to, against the BLM to say, look, you cannot restrict these guys' rights. It predates what you have. So we got to get them involved. The other thing that's, that's hijacking our state is the LCDC. 
The governor appoints all seven members of the LCDC commission, and as governor, I would appoint seven rural-friendly members to that commission so counties and cities could redraw their urban growth boundaries and they could decide how to use the land in their counties. So, so the, the other thing that the governor does that a lot of people don't know about is the, the governor, the secretary of state, and the treasurer, those three guys make up the state land board. Right? So we get two out of three of those guys as conservative Republicans. Guess what we do in the woods now? We go back to logging. We go back to mining. We go back to working. We go back to ranching. We go back to farming. And, 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 and if they're state lands, we can't get dragged into federal court. So that's what we got to do. And there's some there's some issues out there. The wolves they need to be they need to be de endangered. How about the sea lions at the coast? You think those are still endangered? No. That's what's killing the salmon and the fishermen. You know these kind of things need to be changed, but it can only be changed with the proper leadership from Oregon and with your help. I mean I'm so honored today to be with you guys, and uh, I, I can't tell you how much it means to me that you guys turned out. Uh, you know both up there and here. Because, you know, we, we can't, I can't change this state by myself, and it's all you guys coming on board that saying, you know what, Bruce, I, I got posts on Facebook, are you for real? Like, you think just like me. And they, they it's like they don't really believe that I, I, I believe that way. Hey, look, this is who I am. I ran this way two years ago. I'm running on the same platform I ran two years ago on. The nice thing about this race is we have a presidential race on the same year as a governor race, which doesn't happen, but thank goodness that Kitts Harbor got kicked out. Here we are. So, so we've got a conservative wave coming across the country that Oregon needs to capitalize on, and we need to put a conservative governor in there, and I hope to be that guy, and I, and I would appreciate your support. Thank